Good morning dear students. Today we will study some more parts of the eye. Please listen to the class carefully. Nasolacrimal apparatus. Nasolacrimal apparatus consists of lacrimal glands or tear glands, lacrimal ducts, lacrimal sacs and nasolacrimal duct. The tear glands or lacrimal glands secrete tear which lubricate the eyeball, washes the eyeball, kills the germs if any present in the air that enters into the eyeball. In addition to it, the tear also has the function of communicating one's emotions. But I had mentioned in the last class that this point should not be mentioned as one of the function of tear. Now this tear which is being secreted by lacrimal gland, uh, the tear when it is in excess is drained out through the lacrimal duct and be stored in the lacrimal sac and the excess of tear will be drained out into the nasal chamber or the into the passage of the nose through the nasolacrimal duct that is being shown in the diagram. This nasolacrimal duct, it is a narrow tube located at the inward side of each eye that opens into the nasal chamber. It drains out the excess of tear into the nasal chamber. That is why sometimes we experience the taste of eye drops if it is dropped in excess in the eye. The excess of eye drops is drained into the nasal chamber through the nasolacrimal duct and from there to the throat or to the pharynx and we experience the taste of it. And also we can see a person crying badly experience running of nose or watering from the nose as some quantity of excess of tear is drained out into the nose through the nasolacrimal duct. That's why the person has running of nose at the time when he is weeping very badly. And if this duct has any blockade in it, nasolacrimal duct has if any blockade in it, it can lead always watering of the eyes. The person may have always experienced watering of the eyes. One of the reasons for it is this duct is blocked. That could be cleared by a minor surgery and the person can get rid of these problems. Next we will discuss about the layers of the eyeball. Eyeball has three layers. They are outer sclera, or sclerotic layer, middle choroid layer and inner retina. The outer sclera, it is a tough white fibrous layer found as the outer layer of the eyeball. The main function of the sclera is to give shape to the eyeball. You can see from this figure that the bluish colored one represent the sclera and the middle the reddish colored one or pinkish colored one represent the choroid and the inner the brownish colored one represent the retina. These are the three important layers of the eyeball. This diagram also says about the sclera as I had mentioned earlier the bluish colored part sclera and the sclera has in its anterior portion front region is projected out to form a transparent part that is called a cornea. Then when we come to middle choroid and this middle choroid has three different regions. One is of course the choroid layer which is found all around in the middle region of the eyeball and next is the ciliary body or ciliary muscle 
by which the lens is suspended and another is the iris which forms the pupil at its center and regulate the entry of the light into the eyes. We will study about them in detail. And the another important feature of the choroid layer is that it has melanin pigment present in this layer. That is why the inner part of the eyeball is darker always it is darker. Now come to the innermost layer retina. It is a pigmented layer has two different type of sensory cells in it called road cells and corn cells corn cells, roads and cones. We will also study about them in detail. As I have mentioned, the anterior part of the sclera is transparent and slightly bulged outward and this part is called cornea. This is the part of the eye used in eye donation and get a, and grafted to get grafted to a patient having opaque or defective cornea to restore vision. So the cornea is this transparent part of the sclerotic layer, sclera, transparent part of the sclera which is found at the anterior part of the eye. It looks like a glass. Okay, it allows the light to pass through. Why it is transparent? It is transparent because it does not have any blood vessels or nerves present in it. It is being nourished by the surrounding fluid. And the cornea is the part of the eye which is used in eye donation. Eye donation. Okay, this is the part of the eye which is being grafted to a patient who has defective cornea. That's all for today. Please watch this video once again and read the consent topic from the book. Thank you. Have a nice day.